Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Lifeboat Live uh, with me, Absolutely Arian. And I am excited to be back. Listen, I know I haven't been here for just a couple of weeks. Um, I was very much under the weather. Um, and so I am doing much better now and able to use uh, my voice because I had no voice at all for the longest time. So uh, I am back and I'm excited to share uh, with just some new life lessons. You know what the life, if, you, if you're new to the lifeboat, well, welcome. Um, what I do here is I share life lessons that I have learned a life uh, long life's journey, uh, so that um, I can, um, so other people can glean from my life experiences, and perhaps uh, make better decisions for themselves, or <clears throat> find maybe even relate relatability and finding out that they're not alone in this world, and that you know other people are going through similar things. <clears throat> so as you can hear, I'm still a little bit. No, got a throat thing going on, but um, I couldn't miss out on another week with you guys. Um, I'm so excited to be back on here. If you are just joining, I would love to hear who is in the room. Please leave me some comments, send up some hearts, some likes. Um, make sure you share the video and tag some friends in the comments so that they can join the conversation. I love to hear from you guys. I love when you guys talk back to me. So go ahead and Join the uh, hit me in the comment sections and let me know uh, what you think and just join in on the conversation as well. Um, so yes, um, listen, I'm not going to keep you long tonight, but tonight I'm talking about coping with transition, um, and it's something that I have struggled with in my own uh, journey, my, my own life journey, um, and I'm going to get into it in a little bit more detail in just a moment. <clears throat> um, but. Uh, what I want you to know tonight is that um, I am speaking from my own life experience. Now, everyone has different life experiences. Everyone goes through different handles, transition, grief, and trauma differently. Um, <clears throat> I am not a licensed therapist, and I am only speaking from my um, knowledge, the wisdom that I have gained through living life, all right? And so with that disclaimer out the way, let's get into it, okay? Um, so like I said, tonight we are talking about <clears throat> life's journeys. Oh, yes, hold on. Let me just go ahead and change the status here. I don't know why. I always just, it goes automatically on um, private to public so that you can share. And it's done. So I hope you guys hit that share button. Get into it. Hey, Ashley, thank you so much for joining. I'm so happy. <clears throat> One of the biggest supporters just in life right now and in this lifeboat. So thank you so much uh, for showing up tonight uh, because love shows up. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we're talking about coping um, through transitions. And, you know, dealing with transitions in our lives can be very uh, uncomfortable and it's very vulnerable time in our lives right and so transitions are usually like uh, prefaced with like a string of losses you know such as a loss of like a role in someone's life or a role in a job or uh, a loss of a person loss of a place a home a uh, loss of like your sense of where you fit in in the world right uh, these are different uh transitions and losses that can trigger new transitions um and these events can be very destabilizing because um it may strip you of your familiar future right so what I mean by familiar future is that, you know, a lot of us, we plan, we imagine, uh, we sometimes, uh, you know, feel like we, we w want to know uh, what is next. And so sometimes uh, when you're left in the unknown, it really can be uh, triggering, right? And when we experience things like accidents, death, divorce, job loss, or just serious illness, even, it can be earth shattering. It could feel like, you know, somebody just took the ground from underneath your feet. And uh, the unexpected turn of events can even be just a traumatic or re-traumatization and causing us to retreat and to isolate due to fear, right? 
Um, and fear is really a lot of the times the root of um, of the uncomfortable and the vulnerability and the the um, you know the well the fear and anxiety that we're feeling in 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 these kind of periods, right? So it's normal for significant loss to make most people fear feel fearful and, and anxious. So especially because we live in a culture that encourages us to have five, 10, 15, 20 year goals or plans uh, for our lives. And there's nothing wrong with having plans, but um, it's about how we bounce back when those plans shift, when they change, when they're completely wiped out and there's something new uh, that you know God wants to do in our lives. And sometimes that can be really we have to grieve the imagine the, the imaginary future the familiar future that we have created right and that can be um traumatic and since your future is no longer what you planned or what you imagined um it is normal to feel afraid completely unprepared and uh we may you know, be thrown into like a personal crisis, feeling shocked, angry, sad, withdrawn, because we don't, because our reality has been um, sh not shattered. So, I mean, sometimes it feels like it's been shattered, but it's been rearranged, right? Uh, I hope you guys are staying with me here because, you know, I know that it's, uh, you know, it can be a little bit of a heavy topic, but it's something that I've been learning about myself, uh, you know, especially in the last two years, how to cope with transition, because this has been the biggest uh, trend. I've gone through different periods of transition, but this has been the biggest one uh, yet um, for me. Um, so, you know, I also want to make it clear that not all transitions are negative things, right? There are some transitions transitions that we may even plan, uh, but are still life altering in many ways, you know? Um, so some life trans transitions um, that may be a more positive experience may be things like getting married, going to college, starting a new job, um, moving to a new city, uh, giving birth to a child, buying a home, uh, relocating, uh, retirement, um, you know, all these things can be really positive uh, transitions that we can sometimes feel that we have a grip on them because we, we um, you know, we plan them. And so tra all transition doesn't look like trauma. All transition doesn't necessarily look like pain. Um, but there is still adjustment periods in even when it's positive right? There's still going to be even little hardships, even when it's planned and positive um, and, a, and a, lear a learning curve, right? So according to um, an article that I was reading by a licensed therapist uh, named Richard B. Jolson, DSW, the, stage, uh, the stages of life transitions can look like the following, right? So um, experience a range a range of negative feelings anger anxiety confusion numbness and self-doubt uh two feel a loss of self-esteem three beginning to accept the change four acknowledging that you need to uh, let go of the past and accept the future uh beginning to feel hopeful about the future feeling increased self-esteem and develop an optimist optimistic view of the future so these are the stages of life transitions and like what we may go through, um, you know, in, in that kind of like grieving process. Right. <clears throat> From my personal experience, I've realized that the process of moving through trans transition doesn't always, uh, go in that order necessarily, or is even linear, right? Everyone has a different process and everyone, you know, goes through, uh, or deals with transition differently, but I know that I I cycled back and forth between uh, um, like between some of those stages uh, before I felt secure and you know trusting of my process. And I don't even know that I'm all the way trusting my process yet because I'm still working on my relinquishing uh, certain control over my own future and my own steps. Right. And it's something that I've had to uh, realize and learn how to um, manage in a healthier way. 
and I know some of you may be able to relate. If you can relate, uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Like, yep, yeah, I know uh, control or having to feel like I need, I have control or knowing what the future looks like is important to me. If you agree, um, you know, put your hand up in the comments so that I know that I'm not the only one here feeling this way. By the way, also, I just want to let you know that if you are joining, today is May, what, 12th or 9.15 uh, right now. Um, so it, if I am no longer live, um, then I may not see your comments uh, right away, but I always do come back and read them. So if you do leave a comment, I'll definitely come and interact with that as well. Um, but just know that we are, if you are not, <laughs> if this is not May 12th at nine o'clock at night, then you are no longer um, watching this live, you are watching the replay. So just a little disclaimer there, okay? Um, so, what have coping skills look like for me? So I'm gonna walk you through the journey of my transition and, and just what it looked like for me um, and the coping skills that I had to learn along the way uh, that I didn't even know I was learning or that I was doing until you know I really thought about, uh, sat down and really thought about it. Um, I thought about the life lessons that I have learned uh, through this period of my life, right? So, so many of you may know that I lost my mom, um, you know, in the midst of this pandemic, and it was sudden and unexpected and traumatic event in my life, um, and it felt like it rattled my sense of stability, and I was really scared. I was incredibly vulnerable. And I was looking at a future that I no longer look that no, no longer looked like what I imagined, right? Um, and that was very very scary to me because I had a plan, and my plan was no longer going according <laughs> accordingly. Um, so it caused me to rethink the direction of my life in so many ways. Um, and one thing I noticed that I uh, that. I started doing and that the that the grief and this transition caused me to really st to stop and to reconsider uh what was and wasn't important to me anymore right and so this meant that i was processing and assessing my lifestyle my relationships my material possessions like just everything uh just kind of came into to question and made me have to assess everything that i was um, had and it was physical it was emotional it was all kinds it had there were so many layers to it and uh, I didn't notice that early in my grieving uh, period I was like obsessively cleaning right cleaning my house uh, cleaning uh, my childhood home uh, disposing and getting rid of like just clutter and like things that sometimes were even nostalgic but just cleansing right and i also noticed that i started to do that with even relationships and friendships that were unhealthy or just unfruitful and not really like um going where i needed to go um and so i desperately needed to lighten up my world right um because my world had finally i suddenly felt like it was so heavy and weighed down and i needed relief and so i started decluttering and getting rid of and it was a part of my grieving i didn't realize what i was actually doing like physically emotionally spiritually i was dumping i was getting rid of and i didn't even realize that i was um, preparing for transition without realizing that i was preparing for transition <clears throat> but it was happening uh slowly before me um and so uh eventually um I started to accept that change was a normal part of part of life. But again, like I cycled between like grieving and and feeling scared and then eventually accepting that it was a normal like this was my new normal and my new life. Uh, a life without my mother, a life without within a pandemic, a life without with realizing that, you know, certain plans I had were not gonna manifest um in the way that I thought they would. Um and so you know, there was just, 
there was a lot of transition going going on with my career, my job, and there was just so many things happening all at once, and I was incredibly overwhelmed, right? And I cycled again between accepting change and fear of the future for a while. And if I'm completely honest, um, I've come a mighty, 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 mighty long way, but every now and then the fear peaks up and rears its ugly head every now and then. But um, seeing change um, as a negative or as um, experiencing that um, an experience that you must avoid makes it even more difficult to navigate and less pers like personally productive, right? So I found myself using prayer to alleviate the anxiety. Um, I uh, I knew that I knew that my experience um, I knew that my experience was not uh, fatal. I knew it wasn't the end. Right. Um, but you know, I had been through hardships before I've been through transitions before. And I knew the Bible said that all things work together for, or says that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them, you know, who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans eight, um, and 28. And I knew this was true. I, I, I had experienced it. I've had situations that seemed bleak. Um, I've watched God not only restore me, but elevate me. You know, I've seen him um, t turn my sorrow into joy. I've seen him take my mourning and turning it into gladness. I've, I've seen it. I've been there. I've done that. I've overcome. Uh, yet I still struggled with relinquishing control right? Um, the lack of control of my future and the unknown crippled me with anxiety, uh, which at the root uh, of that was fear. Um, I was scared, right? Um, and it's so funny that even though we know and we, we have the scriptures and we know where we've been before, it always seems like the new trial, the new tribulation always, always feels so heavy and, and um, unsure, right? Um, but we have evidence in our lives that, <clears throat> that it always isn't, that it won't always be that way. But yet still we, uh, you know, I was, I could speak for myself. I was crippled with fear. Um, and here's the thing I had been through, like I said, transition before. And I felt like I was walking through, <clears throat> I felt like I was walking through a dark tunnel and couldn't even see a foot in front of me. I could not see my hand in front of me. Um, and it was scary, to be honest. It was scary. And for a moment, you know, I realized, and I'm going to give us kind of a, a I'm going to paint a picture here for us. For a moment, I had to stand in it, right? I had to stand in it and accept that this is what it is. I had to stand in the darkness of this tunnel. Right. And uh, at some point I have to make a, I had to make a decision. Are you going to continue to allow the fear of not being able to see keep you stagnant or are you going to take a step forward by faith? Right. This dark tunnel felt like I couldn't see the end of it. I couldn't see I couldn't even see in front of me, but I had to make a decision. Are you going to stand still or are you going to move by faith? And, and faith doesn't mean that you're not scared. It just means that you're going to do it despite the fear, right? So um, I took my time uh, and I slowly felt around me and I slowly tried to feel out my environment. And eventually I um, cautiously stepped a little bit, uh, stepped forward, right? I stepped forward and... Um, the, the, I, you know, even though in the beginning I took these little micro steps, um, to see like what was going to, you know, what was going to be next for me, um, as, as uncomfortable and disorienting and insecure as I felt, I had to let go. Right. And after a few steps and a, and a few little micro steps, I started to realize that the ground was still under me, right? The ground was still there. Um, and so I stepped a little faster and eventually my eyes started to adjust to the darkness of the tunnel. And I was able to have a better idea of my environment, but it didn't happen until I decided to stay in it and move forward, right? 
And so the steps became a little bit more confident as I decided um, to do it despite the fear. Um, and so learning to identify and express your feelings and build your support system was another huge um, um, step or in coping and learning to deal with this trans this these huge transitional moments in my life and like i said i acknowledged how i how i was scared i shared my fear uh at times um and broke down in tears with my close-knit support system right um also therapy was a great tool in helping me to work through my reality my new reality um i was honest with myself and and my close friends um, and family that I trusted, um, who you know, people who I felt like I could be vulnerable around. <clears throat> I broke down into tears many times, talked about the fear of not feeling I had control over my future. Um, a lot of the times they would just um, listen, you know. Um, they were just, it's, it's, it's just funny how God just places people in your life that are just, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> <clears throat> who who he just equips with the wisdom to deal with you, right? So they listened and they gave me the space to emote. They didn't beat me over the head with scripture. They didn't give me a, like these shallow reassurances that everything was going to be okay. And that, you know, they simply were just there. Um, and this was a huge thing for me because safe spaces to vent and to cry and to be vulnerable with your fears and so are is so important. It's so needed. We all need community. We all need um, that support system uh, that we feel like that we feel like we can be, um, you know, um, safe to 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 just be right. Um, well, one thing I found was interesting is that they also knew and discerned when it I needed to be when they needed to speak life into me, right? Speak encouragingly and speak to things I dreamed of back into my life uh, when I couldn't see th in the darkness. Um, and I thank God for them and, I, and for putting, you know, the right words in their mouths to help me to keep stepping because, because I, I needed, I, le I, I needed to lean on, on people who, and uh, people who were just going to be able to give me wise counsel. Right. So that was a so learning to identify and express my feelings and building a support system or having a support system was a huge, um, a huge part of coping and coping with the transition. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. And uh, if you are still here in the room, I hope that you hit share and go ahead and um like and let me know what you're feeling so sandra hibbert says true thank you so much for joining uh tiana michelle says amen <laughs> well amen amen i hope you're enjoying this and hope that you hit share and tag some friends in the comments and have them join in on this conversation um you know because vulnerability and just learn you know having to learn life lessons um the hard way sometimes is it's it's it takes a toll on you right and so uh, I don't do this for anything other than to make sure that other people know that they're not alone because there have been times in my life that I felt alone. I felt like no one understood me. No one was, you know, I, it just felt like I didn't know how to get through certain places and stages in my life. And so I really do this really t so that people see and know that there is hope and that there are other people who have not only gone through it, but survived with a testimony. So um so that's that's that. But getting back on to, you know, I digress a bit there. So um the next step for me in learning how to cope was identifying uh my values and my life goals, right? So I had to figure out uh who I was again, right? In this new reality. Like what I, who I was and what I wanted in this, in this new, um, unknown. Right. And so I had to kind of like reestablish new goals or uh, reestablish 
other goals that you know I hadn't really worked out yet um I had to set new boundaries oh my goodness boundaries have been a huge part of my transitional uh phase and learning how to cope um I had to take responsibility for me I had to learn how to put me first I had to learn how to you know how to heal in a healthy way um I had to figure out step by step and so again that required me to pray um and ask for guidance in this dark tunnel um but i realized how important it was for me to how important it was for me to to step forward um i needed to step i needed to step uh for god's will to be manifested in my life and with every step i took in faith a little more of this reality started to be revealed um i started to see the hand of god move up like and open doors and shut others and it was incredible to watch like the, the little incremental steps i took the more i saw like hope the more i saw another door a little door a, li a little bigger of a door uh, and and um opportunities began to present themselves uh for this new uh reality this new life this new phase or chapter in my life that that i had to now kind of transition and and learn uh how to learn um a new way right so so identify i had to really take time to journal and sit down and think about these things and write down these things and meditate on these things and to find out who i was in this new season of my life um and listen it's been it's been beautiful it's been spiritual it's been it's been um powerful uh just being able to see yourself grow to see yourself thrive um in one of the darkest periods of my life uh to see myself and realize that i was much stronger than i ever thought i was or knew that i was um being able to just to kind of bulldozer through um be or feel like i've been bulldozered but still get up again right so another very important part of this transition was taking good care of myself right so self care has been a major part of my journey huge um if i needed to sleep longer i gave myself permission to do so if i wanted to watch movies that made me laugh and read books that helped me to learn about the trauma that i was experiencing if i needed to journal if i needed to exercise so that i helped to uh, to to um get rid of some of the anxieties i was feeling um uh i found activities that gave me relief from just the stressors and a distraction for a bit um of just having to the the fear uh that i was facing facing um i i found those things i found little moments of joy i created little moments of happiness <clears throat> to to relieve the anxiety right um to take care of myself to make sure that i was good to check in with myself to be mindful and to know that you know to know where i was in my process just being in tune with me was so important uh to just having a healthy journey in this tunnel this dark tunnel right um and so that led me to really having to acknowledge what i was leaving behind like i'm walking through this tunnel and as i'm getting closer i'm seeing the light right uh but i'm also acknowledging that i'm leaving things in that tunnel i'm leaving thing i first of all things were left even outside before i even got in the tunnel but you know i'm i'm things are dropping off as i'm walking through this tunnel and so you know i think i'm at a stage now where um i have begun to see the light at the end of the tunnel i'm starting to see those things come together and work for my good i'm starting to see stability i'm starting to see restoration um and a bright future again i've also i also feel like um i feel much more comfortable with leaving the past behind and i'm really realizing that it's it's it is difficult to mourn the death of my old reality the things the people the places that i once found refuge and safety in it's it's hard to leave these things behind um but they had to die in order for me to experience the new 
the renaissance. In every renaissance, there's been war, there's been death, there's been transition of, you know, out with the old, in with the new. And um, I've always prayed, I've always been someone who's prayed um, that God's will be done in my life, right? And, <clears throat> and, you know, he's been working it out and I needed to step out of the tunnel and into the light. Uh, and I made it out alive and I've witnessed a great work that is beginning, which is only the beginning. Um, but I'm now at the point where I'm getting relief. I'm starting to see uh, my direction again. Um, and I'm beginning to build back that self-esteem, build back that confidence, build back that stability. Um, and it feels great, you know? And let me tell you, at the beginning of that tunnel, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't know what was next. Um, and it's just so important to remember every time you go through, this may not be the last, it won't be the last transition I go through. You know what I mean? Um, the next one may not be as rough of, as this one, but there may be, you know, some more that, that God wants to take me through at some point in my life. But what I do know is that I have, survived enough storms to know that they don't last always. Um, I've survived enough storms to know that they don't last always and that I've walked through enough dark tunnels to know that eventually um, there's light. Eventually you're, you start to adjust, you start to, to um, transition, you start to rebuild and you're able to get through it by God's grace. And that leaves me with the conclusion of just taking one step at a time. Um, you know, these transitions give us a chance to learn about our strengths and to explore what we really want out of life. Um, you know, it's the time to reflect, uh, you know, and to, we can reflect and we can see the results of this renewal and this stability and this new equilibrium, but taking your time is essential right? It's scary, but like every other transition in my life, the other side was always beautiful and worth the pain in getting there. And so, you know, with that said, like, you know, I said I wasn't going to keep us long tonight and I really promised that. I just wanted to let you show you um, the darkness that I've had to walk through. Um, and I also wanted to let you know that it's possible to come out and see restoration and see uh, joy again and see peace again and see stability again and see and have confidence again in what is next for you. There's always a next. You know, as long as you have breath in your lungs, you have a chance to 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 re to to live through this renaissance of your own transition. Um, and although it's not always easy, it's not always, um, it's not going to be smooth and it's going to get dark. Um, you're still going to get through it. You're still going to get through it because um, when God's hand is on you, um, you have to make it. It's not, a, it's not an option. It's, it, it's, it's, it seems gl glib. It seems, um, you know, dark. It seems impossible. Um, but I believe that God loves impossible situations so that he can remind us every single time uh, that he is in control. And so um, relinquishing that control uh, was so difficult for me. And it's still something that I'm, um, that I have to contemplate and to think through and to be intentional and conscious of. Um, I have to realize when I start to feel like I need control I, that I have to uh, loosen my grip and just tr trust that God's got me. Um, despite the pain, despite the, the, the fear, despite the anxiety, um, you know, I know that I, where I know where I need to cast my cares. You know, I know that it makes no sense to to be anxious. You know, um, but I'm human, and 
I'm having a human experience. And sometimes we need to be reminded. And I hope this, um, if you are going through a transition, if you are trying to learn uh, this a new era, and we all have, even through this a pandemic and COVID, we've all had to transition. And it's been difficult for some of us more than others, you know, um, but I hope that this is your sign. I hope this is your um, encouragement. I hope this is your, um, you know, your encouragement that you are able to get through and that just give it some time, take it one step at a time um, and you will be able to see it through. So, cause God will, will see you through. So with that said, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, again, if you are watching on the replay, we're no longer here, but I will definitely come and uh, read your comments uh, once I come back to them. Uh, if you liked it, please share. If you're watching, if you, um, if you, you know, think that you know some people who can benefit from this and you don't want to tag them in the comments, just share it to their DM. Um, because I believe that this is going to encourage someone. It's going to help them um, because, you know, this is mental, you know, again, May is Mental Health um, Awareness Month. And um, I want to shine a light on the fact that, you know, we, we all go through and have struggled with mental health. Um, and it's okay to admit that you're struggling emotionally, you're struggling mentally. Um, and I want us to all know that there is a lifeboat. Um, there is a, a, a boat that will be dispatched at sea to help those who are in distress um, to get to the next level in, the, in your life. So glad you are here. For those who have been watching, thank you so much. I appreciate you. We will be back here next Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time with another Lifeboat Live uh, to give you some more life lessons. I have learned a lifelong life's journey um, and, you know, special guests along that come along uh, every now and then to join me on this Lifeboat to give you um, more hope. So with that said, have a great night and I'll see you again next week. But until then, sail on.